Okay, let's get to the good wood now. I almost want to name this little mini lecture uh, Wood Terroir, or, or better yet, Barrel Terroir. Why would that be? Well, because it depends on where are the trees from. What's the tree terroir? The climate and the soils and the growing conditions that went into that tree that then gets made into a barrel because that determines what flavors and aromas are going to be incorporated into the final wine, much like grapes themselves, the whole concept of terroir. But hang on, I'll, I'll, I'll finish with that. Let's get back to the good wood. What is the wood itself that's used primarily for barrel creation across planet Earth? Uh, almost exclusively, it's oak. And more exclusively than that, it's white oak. That's the primary wood used, primary species in general. Now, white oak can be found I think across the Northern Hemisphere, across North America and Eurasia. Um, but other woods have been used in the past and probably people are experimenting around with things even here in the present. In the past, uh, what woods have been attempted to be made into barrels? Well, I talked about uh, palm wood back in ancient Mesopotamia, but other ones in the more modern era like chestnut, uh, pine, redwood, acacia. People have dabbled with all these woods to be made into barrels particularly barrels that are going to be used for wine and whiskey production, but none of them are as good as white oak. They're just not as good. All of the other woods have either some sort of chemical thing that we don't like to get into the wine, or it's a physical thing, that the wood itself is not suited for barrel production. Meaning that chestnut, chestnut's a great wood. The American chestnut, ah, oh, helped build America. It's largely extinct now, but Chestnut is an awesome wood, but it's super high in tannins, and it's a pretty porous wood, meaning that the liquid, the, the wine or whiskey, would leach w into the wood a lot and extract a lot, and therefore would extract out a lot of tannic component, like too much. So a physical thing, it's too porous, and a chemical thing, it makes for too much tannic extraction. Not good for wine. Uh, redwood. Redwood's a great wood from California. Uh, make it into hot tubs and stuff. But uh, redwood is a really rigid wood. So physically, it might impart good flavors and aromas to wine. I don't know. I've never had a redwood barrel aged wine. It might have good flavors and aromas, but physically it's very tough. It's very rigid. So think about the how barrels are made from that cooperage video. You have to bend them. And redwood is just too tough. It can't be manipulated. Other woods like applewood, cherry wood, those, you know, fruit trees, they actually smell fantastic. Have you ever burnt a, a fire uh, out of cherry wood or, or redwood? Or you can even smoke meats with them. They smell delicious. And one would then think, well, those things smell delicious on their own, so they'll probably impart some delicious aromas into wine, but they don't. People have tried, and it's like, mmm, something, it smells good. You know, grape juice smells good, and applewood smells good, but you put them together, don't smell good. And then there is, speaking of not smelling good, there's woods like pine. <laughs> pine is just ass for barrel production because it's sappy, it's resinous, and it's extremely floral in a scent of pine. I don't know how else to describe it to you. If you don't know what pine smells like, go rip off a ranch and smell it or go get a bottle of pine salt, a liquid, you know, cleansing agent. And when you make that a barrel out of it, it's probably all sappy and sticky and it's all the sap gets into the wine and you don't like the smell or flavor. It's horrible. Having said that, you can actually try. <laughs> you can find a wine that's flavored uh, from pine wood. It's called Retsina out of Greece. So if you want to experiment, get a really cheap, really, really cheap, horribly made Retsina, and you can taste what pine does to wine, and you'll likely spit it out and move on about your business. <laughs> All right, so the other woods, not so great. Mostly oak. Uh, and for barrels used all around the world, predominantly white oak from North America and Europe. And we can get more specific from that. I'll, I won't say all, but the vast majority of barrels are produced from white oak from the United States and France. Other places do it, but these are the big boy power players when it comes to barrel production and barrels used for wine and whiskey production. But only specific parts. We'll come to that next. But what is it about the white oak that's so great then? If all these other ones had flaws, what's so great about white oak? One, it's uh, malleability, it's workability. 
it's, it's wood, so it's tough. And oak is a tough wood all the way around. And so white oak is tough. You can stand up to a beating once you've cracked it into a barrel, but you can soak the staves and then they become flexible, they're bendable. But they don't become brittle once you dry them back out. So it's malleability, it's really great as opposed to other woods. And white oak's actually even better than most other oaks when it comes to working and crafting the wood into a rounder shape that is a barrel. Two, it's porosity. White oak has just the right porosity. And what we mean by that is that oak, uh, wood in general, it's natural, it's fibrous. And so when you make, when you soak wine in a wood barrel, the liquid itself gets soaked into the sides of the wood. Now, if your wood is too super porous, it goes too much into it and actually would go all the way through it, I guess, if it was a super porous wood, so it wouldn't hold water. That's not good for anything. But you also don't want a wood that's, that is so not porous that, that it, hardly any of the liquid gets absorbed into the wood. We actually want the liquid to be absorbed into part of the wood. And white oak is super awesome because, you know, the stave, the wine barrels are about that thick, right? And so they make staves a certain uh, uh, width. If they made them too thin, it'd be too brittle, and, and the, wood, the, the liquid would go all the way through. So you make it about that much, and it's just the right porosity that the, the uh, wine or whiskey will soak into the first, I don't know, quarter inch, half inch, three quarters of an inch, maybe an inch, into the wood, but not all the way through. And it's going to circulate, get sucked in, consider the wood almost like a sponge. And so the liquid's going to get sucked into some of that sponge, but not all the way through, and then go back out into the rest of the fluid. So it cycles and circulates through the wood to get stuff out we want. Ah, that brings us to the number three big important thing about what's so awesome about white oak. It has these awesome things that we want in it. It has desirable flavors and aromas that we super like in wine. Now, not everybody super likes oak flavors in wine, but a lot of people do, and a lot of people have for a lot of hundreds of years. So what additional flavors does white oak have that say pine does not? White oak has these phenols that we really like. And again, the phenols are these little compounds that are all around us that give us smells and taste and aromas. The phenols of note in white oak wood are vanillin. Vanillin, I said vanillin not vanilla. Vanilla is what you think of like a vanilla flavored ice cream and vanilla extract. The thing is though, vanillin is this organic compound that gives us that flavor of vanilla. So vanillin is in vanilla, but it's also in white oak wood. And it gives those sweet flavors, the kind of sweetness of like a tea flavor or whatever you, a little bit of spicy tea sweetness flavor. We really like that flavor. That's why vanilla is used in so many things. Now, natural vanilla actually comes from a bean, like a pod, right? Uh, from orchids, I believe, down in like the rainforest of Mexico and Central America is their original source of natural vanilla. You don't get hardly any of that anywhere anymore. You get uh, artificially uh, produced vanilla extract that's made chemically with vanillin or chemically made into vanillin. White oak has that. That's one of the more important phenols. White oak also has tannins. Tannins? Yes, you know what tannins are. We've talked about tannins a lot. They help build the backbone and structure of a wine. They're found naturally in red grape skins. They're also in wood. So you get some phenols like vanillin and tannins. And you also get other components, other phenols, that uh, give wood associated flavors and smells. Straight up wood, like, you know, have you ever smelled pencil shavings or a cedar closet? Now, some of us really like the smell of wood, and oak has some of those elements that we, mm, they just are good, and we like them in there. White oak has all of those things, and probably a few more I've forgotten, in just the right amounts. So white oak is super predominant in barrel production the world over, mostly in America and France. However, there are big differences between the continents. I should say maybe even just between the countries. So again, white oak is a species that's found all over the place in lots of different countries. Main production sources for barrels, France and America. And there are significant differences between oak from America and oak from France. I'm speaking in generalities here, but it's super important for you to understand why, because it really makes a big difference in the finished wine, what type of barrel, what type of wood uh, was used to make the barrel that, that wine was in. And it will become evident to you the more wines you drink. So let's talk about it. 
What's the difference between American oak and French oak specifically? Well, the species, again, they're all generally in the white oak category, but the species of oak typically used for American barrel production is Quercus alba. Quercus alba. Aren't you so glad you took that Latin class back in high school? <laughs> now, this is an oak species that is characterized by relatively fast growth. It's a tree that grows fast, goes straight, goes up. And in doing so, it has wider grains. I'll come back to that in a minute and slightly lower wood tannins than one would expect. And this species is found really all over the United States, but all over the Eastern United States, all over the Appalachians. The white oak is mixed in with all forest types over in the East, but also kind of in the upper Midwest, upper central part of the country. So Minnesota, Wisconsin, uh, even Missouri down further South. And I'm gonna go out on a limb here, but um, <laughs> Out on a limb, I'm sorry, that one just came to me. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and also point out that I think Missouri may be one of the biggest, if not the biggest, barrel producing states in the country. And that's because they have the Ozarks there, the Ozark Mountains, this chain of mountains, this little area that uh, is famous for the white oak produced there that people particularly like this white oak from this part of the country to be made into barrels because it specifically tastes better for certain properties that are going to go into the wine. Uh, oh, see, we're already, I'm already folding that wine terroir concept back in on you. So Quercus alba, bigger grains, faster growing tree, bigger grains. Okay. How does the French style differ? In Europe, in general, across Europe, and specifically France, uh, they use couple different species. The Quercus robert, which is just referred to the common oak, and I think it grows just about everywhere in Europe. And more specific to France, Quercus petrea. I believe that's the pronunciation, Quercus petrea. And that would be French white oak. Both are used for winemaking. Both are used for barrel production and winemaking all over Europe. However, the more famous uh, ones are from France certain forest in France. Oh, I'm sneaking wood terroir back in again. But certain areas of France and white oak from France are considered superior because the tree itself is slower growing, which makes for smaller, tighter grains in the cell wall. And it has increased amounts of those components we like, like vanillin and other phenols and tannins. Huh. Okay, now I gotta, I gotta pull it off the back burner. American oak's got bigger grains, French oak got smaller grains. What's that got to do with my wine? Everything, <laughs> just everything. I'm no biologist, all right, or dendrologist. Go look up what that means. <laughs> but the size of the grain has huge impact on the wine industry because the wider the grain, the more open it is. We'd say it's, it's more open, kind of like cell wall, whatever. Again, oh, let me go back to the sponge analogy. So you got a sponge, and that's your wood, right? And the sponge has really big holes, really big pores. And therefore, if you have a really open grain, big pore sponge, a liquid can get into it really quickly. A lot of liquid can get into it, and you smash the sponge out, and all the liquid goes out, and then more liquid goes into it, all right? So again, consider it like a sponge. I think this will work as an analogy. With American oak being so open grained, big grained, you just get a lot more out of it a lot faster. More what? More phenols, more the tannins, more aggressive raw wood flavors and aroma and subtannic structure, more that sweet vanillin flavors that will, more, 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 yeah! And aggressive, a lot of it, and quickly. <laughs> Isn't that just like America? <laughs> Anything you do, we do it bigger. Anything you got, we do it more. If you do a little, we do a lot. And I even kind of think of this in terms of uh, uh, like the craft beer revolution. Uh, Americans take styles from Europe and make them excessive. <laughs> I'll just pick on one that some of you know, like IPA. India Pale Ale, Chip Chip Cheerio, that's a British style. And it's a British style of beer that, uh, it has a light hop integration. So it's a little bitter, a little hop flavor. And 
uh, when American craft brewers got a hold of it, they're like, oh, IPA style is a, a little bit hoppy. Okay, good. We're going to make the same beer and make it gigantically hoppy and pack in tons and tons and tons of hops. And it's so bitter and it's so aggressive. And there's so much hop aroma and flavor. You get punched in the face. That's what an American IPA is versus an English IPA. And think of that same scenario with wood. American oak, big grains, big excessive flavors in a big way, in a hurry. Let's now talk about its French counterpart. <laughs> French white oak. Ah, uh, and again, it's portraying French culture. Uh, French oak is, because it grows slower, it's smaller grained, it's tighter grained, it's not as open, it's a little more reserved. And for winemaking, that means that you will get the same flavor profile as you do from American oak, but it might take a little longer, and it's going to be a lot more subtle, and it's going to be more slowly integrated, which means in their mind it's more complex. So you will get perhaps uh, the same amount of aromatics, but they'll be more subtle. You'll actually get a little bit more tannin than you would with the American counterpart, but it's slightly different. It's in there. It's in deeper. It's in there more complex. It's a more gradual integration of all of these aromas and flavors that we're talking about. So, American aggressive, yeah! French oak. Ho, ho, ho. We are more subtle. <laughs> Does that make sense? So, at, at the end of the day, when you're talking about wine, wines that are produced in American oak barrels have more pronounced oxidation. Remember, we were talking about the role of oxidation as well. You, bigger pores mean that more stuff's coming in, including a little bit more oxygen, and oxygen rounds things out. So you have more pronounced oxidation, a quicker release of aromas and flavors that help tamper down the astringency and harshness faster. So when for new wine, especially we're talking about red wine, goes into an oak barrel, it's astringent and tannic and big. And so you match that with a big American oak wood and it actually helps tamp things down quicker, and thus American oak is kind of the choice for shorter maturations. You got a big bold red wine, we've got a big bold American wood to kind of pair up with that. America, American oak barrels are also a little bit more uh, uh, a chill on the tannins, so they're big on a lot of things, but they're more chill on the tannins. So it's one of the reasons why if you have an extremely tannic, big red wine, you might want to actually use American oak because your wine already has a ton of tannic component. The American oak will actually help chill that out because it's not going to add a lot more tannic component as opposed to, say, its French counterpart. Does that make sense? So with a really harsh, aggressive, astringent, big red wine, it, those, those aggressive wood flavors marry together and the, a little bit of oxygen and all of this integrates to help make more palatable tannins while adding in all the big flavors and aromas we like, okay? French oak, on the other hand, uh -huh. uh, it's more subtle. It generates slower, more slowly generates silky and more transparent tannins. It's actually gonna add more tannins than American oak, but more slowly and it's going to transmit this kind of light sweetness and light fruitier flavors that will persist in the uh, on the palate as opposed to you know being punched in the face with big aggressive uh, american oak flavors and because of the nature of the beast and the way that you integrate those flavors out of french oak they get you you actually get different flavor you get kind of different phenolic compounds that make the finished wine taste different so you french oak you'll get a little bit more spice. Vanilla, if you think of spice and vanilla, you get a little bit more of that with uh, the French. Not the vanilla and sweetness, but a little more of the spice. And actually toasted almonds are an oft used descriptor for French oak uh, flavors. And especially with ripe red fruit and red wines, this combines really well. That almondy, fruity combo, but in white wines, French oak imparts more subtle fruit flavors, almost hints of peach, exotic fruits, some hints of floral uh, uh, aromas like jasmine can be pulled out. But do always keep in mind, it depends on what wine you're putting into it. So you can't get jasmine out of a Zinfandel. So I I'm speaking in generalities of these are the differences between French oak and American oak. 
and they're dependent on the wines that you're putting in them. But this is why winemakers use different woods from different places to get different things out to put into their finished wine. And I've been making, you know, two generalizations now, or, or, or two kind of broad categories, American white oak, French white oak. There are others that are used. There are other white oaks, and again, common oaks that can be found in different parts of Europe. And people have, in the past, used those oaks, and people are increasingly starting to experiment around with them in today's world. People are dusting off some of the old traditional wood sources and saying, hey, let's try those. Ones of note that you might see on a wine label include Slavonian oak. Slavonian oak was uh, uh, originally from the Balkan Peninsula, mostly Croatia. So most Croatian wines use Slavonian oak, and a lot of Italian producers actually use Slavonian oak. It's uh, a little tighter grained, even more than the French uh, white oak, and so it it's, it adds flavors, but even more subtly and even more slowly. So a lot of Croatians and Italians use uh, uh, Slavonian oak to make hogsheads. There's really big ones. And they'll use them for many years to slowly pull stuff out. Does things at a different pace. There's also Hungarian oak. Hungarian oak used to be all the rage like 100 years ago. But because of geopolitics and the Cold War and all that stuff, that all kind of went away. And they're revamping their industry now. And Hungarian oak is supposed to be pretty awesome because it's slower growing even than a common, uh, or, uh, common oak or the French oak uh, from France. And there's a lot of forests that have kind of these volcanic soils. And so they grow slower and have tighter grains as well. And they add a subtlety. This is not, I'm not speaking from experience now, just stuff I read. They add a subtlety that even the finest French white oak barrels don't add. So Hungarian oak is being looked at and their industry is increasing by leaps and bounds. And I've now seen folks experimenting with white oak in Canada. So you may see Canadian white oak on a label of wine. And it's the same species. It's Quercus alba. It's the exact same species that's grown in Virginia or Missouri or, uh, or Minnesota. But it's in Canada. So being further north in Canada, it, it's cooler slash colder. Things grow slower. So now we're back again to kind of wood tear. Wow, wait a minute. It's growing slower up there. So what does that mean for the tree and its grain size? Well, actually, they say that it's an American oak, but it grows more like a European oak, which means that it's somewhere in between. So it's American oak species, but with a smaller grain size, more like French oak. So it, it has the best of both worlds, right? And, and that brings us back to the end now, where I've mentioned two or three or five times. I'm actually predicting a, a huge kind of revolution is too strong a word, but you're going to see a lot more people innovating with wood terroir. And it's a term I just made up, barrel terroir. I don't think you'll find it anywhere, but I think you understand implicitly what I'm talking about already. Different woods from different places are already known to add certain attributes to wine. And they are used in different ways by different winemakers to pull out particular things they want. And this isn't even that particularly novel in terms of I invented it, People have already identified this, and there are particular forests around the planet that people say, no, this, this particular terroir of this forest produces the wood that we want specifically to make these barrels to make the wine that we want to make. And French oak in particular, they, the barrels in France come from named forest. You might have even seen this in wine descriptions or on wine labels. Uh, Allier uh, Limogen. Uh, Nevers, Tronce, I think that's how you pronounce it, or Vosges, uh, Limosian oak is one that maybe you've seen and you thought, oh, that must be some species of tree. No, that's uh, French white oak, but it's from a forest named Limosian. And there are certain named, almost like wildlife sanctuaries in France. They're like, nope, this is forest and we, this forest will not be messed with because this is used for barrel production. So that's, they've already kind of taken it down to the next level that wood from certain forests will add certain attributes to wine. And many winemakers around the world, and many more in the future, are going to utilize barrels made from different cooperages, from different regions, using wood from different forests, and doing different things like degrees of toasting or the way they cut the wood at the cooperage. 
everybody's going to start paying a lot more attention to those things and telling you the consumer about those things because they understand the importance of this is what you're tasting in this wine. And we can take the exact same batch of juice and put it in 10 different barrels. And I believe increasingly you, the consumer, will be able to detect the differences, but at least between several of those barrels of wine, even from the exact same juice, from the exact same producer, produced the exact same way. That, those differences can only be attributed to the terroir of the barrel itself. And I find it terribly fascinating and exciting and awesome, but that's because I'm a huge geek. So let's back off the wood terroir until I write a book about it and get back to the complexity that goes into these wines from the wood. Let's talk about the specific flavors and aromas that are added to our finished wine via the wood, no matter where the wood is from.